Hey, welcome to another episode of Open Mic. My name is Jared, and I'm excited that you are listening today. If you've never listened to Open Mic before, it's an opportunity for us to speak truth into young adults and young adulthood. So uh, today we are starting our first in a series of podcasts that go along with our Catching Feelings series on relationships. And today we are talking about marriage. And I'm here with Darian, Logan, and Chloe. And I want to start off by asking you, what is your favorite rom-com, romantic comedy? Go. My favorite is um, Bride Wars. That is my favorite. Um, I also did recently, though, watch While You Were Sleeping. It's like an older rom-com in that. Uh, not is Julia up Roberts. There. Um, um, Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Bullock. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That's become that's become up there for what me. What a title! Because it could you wouldn't think it was a rom-com from the title. It's yeah. a, it's an odd one, mm-hmm. isn't it? Isn't mm-hmm. it? So, her some guy gets hit by a train and gets into a coma and she falls well, in love with her brother. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Well, yeah, you guys should watch it. It's on. Oh, I have Plus. seen that. I've seen that. I have it's not really seen like good. any movies. So, um, my favorite though is Hitch. <laughs> I've not seen like all the basic movies. Like Chloe always is like. Are you calling Chloe basic on the podcast? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. She hasn't seen just like the you know hairspray, a bunch of Disney movies. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have enough. seen um, To All the Boys That I've Loved Before mm. and The Summer That I Turned Pretty. I love I love those. Mm. Crazy Rich Asians. That is yeah, my number one. Good. That's my number one. That's, that's it. Pretty good. Um, I don't have a top rom-com. I did just watch the live rendition of, of uh, Beauty and the Beast or like oh the newest God. one. It was good. It was good. <laughs> that's I, a romance. I, I started watching it with my daughter and then she went to bed and I watched the rest <laughs> of it <laughs> myself. So. Just finish it out. Well, that's great. I think Hitch is my favorite as well. Hitch um, is good. Kevin James is good, and he should win an Academy Award for anything he's in. Yeah. Um, but it's it's got some solid uh, some solid uh, dialogue in it. But um, okay, I'm gonna ask this because one of one of the, the things that Logan mentioned in his message um, a couple of days ago was like having a good example in marriage, and 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 how do you set yourself up for success moving forward? So I'd ask the question like, how do you prep for marriage? Because chances are a lot of our community is single or getting ready to get married or um, young married. How do you prep for marriage maybe before you're there? Mm. There is a really good book out there. I, I mean, I guess right now I'm speaking to the girls, but it's called How to Love Your Husband Before You Even Have One. And that book is all, it's a podcast as well, but it's all about like prepping for being married one day, um, if that's God's will. And it's like, it's all about how you can better your walk with God. And I feel like that is one of the biggest ways. Obviously we can prep prep sorry for marriage is to pursue God deeper um, and grow in our walk with him and our spiritual disciplines like that is such a key thing to do before you enter into marriage because marriage is hard it's not easy and so God sanctifies us through marriage but I think that we um, need to be so walking so closely with him um, before we enter into marriage. Yeah, I think one of the things that impacts guys a lot is pridefulness. And so I would say to the guys, um, really, when you're entering into marriage, you you have to like, you got to get rid of pride because pride is going to be the root of so many um, problems in your marriage if you don't. And how do you do that? Well, you walk with Christ. And honestly, it, it's a pretty simple um, algorithm, I guess, if you will. The the closer I'm walking with Christ, the better husband I am. Mm. And the better husband I am, the better father I am, right? And so my walk with Christ, no matter where you're at in the stage, the, the closer you're walking with Christ, the more you're growing, the, the better you are preparing yourself for your future relationship one day. Yeah, I think what Danny and I did before we got married um, was we started looking for a um, community and a small group of people who were in the same season of us, um, see people who were in a season ahead of us. Um, and so we tried to like merge our lives, um, together before we actually got married and it made the transition so much more like smoother because we were just praying for a community and a small group. And whenever you get married, you are already having so much transition. So the fact that we were in that small group when we were dating and like dating seriously, and then we were in it when we were engaged and then married, like it just made it so much smoother of not like learning new people. And, you know, um, so merging our lives together was, was a big one for us. I think that's probably one of the hardest things that, that couples do is like, the easiest thing that to do whenever you figure out like, I'm going to marry this person is you start isolating yourself right Mm -hmm. away Mm -hmm. because you can in all reality say 
and it's truthful. No one's in the same boat. No one, no one got engaged when we got engaged, <laughs> and no one is getting married the, the same season that we are. And you can isolate yourself and kind of justify it. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make it right, but you can in your mind go, nobody understands where we're at. Um, and Darian, I think what, what, what you have done and what we've talked about, and one, one of the reasons we wanted to, to talk with you here is because I think you've done a good job of like, from before you were married to when you're engaged to when you after you got married, you guys did that intentionally. What do you think maybe the barriers are to like, why don't people do that as they're getting married or even in their dating relationships, find examples? It's hard work. I think regardless, okay, whether it's marriage or you just graduated high school or you just graduated college or you just moved to a new city, transition is always tough. And I found what seems to be a theme is that when you transition, you have to keep engaging in community. And uh, so when you get married, you have to re-engage in community once again. And so I think naturally it's a barrier because it's hard. Like you have to fumble through, Mm -hmm. hey, we're just kind of surface level relationships and you've got to get, it takes a while to be intimate friends with somebody, like close friends with someone. And so I think that uh, because it is hard work, um, it is why a lot of people not not intentionally don't do it. I'm not saying they're lazy. It's just that it doesn't always come natural to us. Maybe that's the way I should say it. Yeah, it's like uncomfortable at times, but it's worth it. Yeah. And I think I think one of the misconceptions is that like, well, I'm going to get married and several of my friends are still single, so I can't spend time with them. What would you guys say to that thought that single, married, can't or shouldn't spend time together? What what would you say to that? I really don't. I mean, yes, it is important to have married, a married community when you are married, but my single friends, like, they love Danny and I, and they love, like, spending time with us, and um, I don't think it matters if they're single and we're married. Um, I think it's important that we spend time together, and then I've had my friends say, like, oh, I want this in a guy because I see your guys' relationship, mm-hmm. and I think it's important to um, not leave your single friends, and I'm a, an advocate for that. I love, mm-hmm. I love being around them. Yeah, does God view single people as less than married people? No, he doesn't at all. So why would we value it any differently? He, there's value in both. And mm-hmm. and what an opportunity. Like, I love hanging out with people in different stages of life because mm-hmm. it opens up my eyes to things. And so I think that's just a practical benefit of it. Yeah, I think it's also so important, too, to, like, have that... Um Ba- I guess boundary you could say of like I am need to like go spend time with like my friends and like Jake needs to go spend time with his friends too like yes we have a married community but and we love hanging out with them together or you know Jake and I will hang out with one of our single friends like the three of us or something like that but I think it's also like really really important in a marriage for like you to go hang out with your friends at times like there's a time and place for that um, and then for him to do the same too because we are refreshed by our friends and like we need that time with them as well. Yeah, and you are clearly, like Scripture says when when we're married, we're unified as one flesh, but that doesn't mean we lose, like, our personal identity, you know? Like, you still need friends, you still Mm -hmm. need hobbies, Mm -hmm. you still need... And yes, you're doing so much together, um, but... I, I, this is, this is kind of an extreme example, but Emma and I talk about this all the time. Uh, it's like, man, we don't know. I mean, no one's guaranteed tomorrow, mm-hmm. right? So if I were to pass away suddenly or something, I still need Emma to be in a spot community wise, spiritually, mm-hmm. whatever. If I wasn't here, she's still okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a good example. And I just think through, you know, we, we have four kids and to think through like, we, we have so many friends that are married without kids or married with fewer kids or married with more. T- we, we, we have friends all along the spectrum of relationships, kids, and we need all of them. Like, I love what our friends without kids that are married bring to our family and our friends that are single bring to our family. And I hope that like, like what Darian said, that, that your friends look at your marriage and say, this is something that I want that you should, that you should continue to have. And, you know, yeah, you, you hope for the best. And like Logan, what you said about the worst case scenario, you, you don't lose your personhood whenever you become married. One of the things that I remember as a really good example, we had a marriage conference at the church and um, uh, a lady named Kathy Wingo, who's a Christian counselor, came and spoke. Um, and she was so good. I just remember uh, what she said. She got married later in life. I think she was in her 40s or 50s and her husband was in her 40s or 50s. So you think that like that's a lot of life to live before you get married. Mm-hmm. And she talked about how in most weddings you have the, the unity thing, whether it's uh, a candle or sand. Or we've done it all, Jared. We've done we, it all. Jared and I have um, done a lot of weddings. and I've, I've tied cords together. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's always the, the most interesting ask have when you, someone. It's have like, I ever told you Kyle's <laughs> idea? 
you, you have Unity Sand and Unity Candle. Combine the words Unity Sandal and you put on like a three-legged God. one sandal yeah. between the two of you. It's a terrible <laughs> idea. But she talked about the idea of like a Unity Candle. Like that's an example that you see all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. But she kind of used the example of like you have two candles, you light one, and then what do you do with the two candles in the rest of the service? You blow them out. And she was like, I don't want my personhood to be blown out. I don't want my mm. personhood to be gone. That You don't cease being an individual even though you are made one in marriage. So, th- and then she went on to explain this example where she said, um, you know, we kind of expect whenever you open up to marriage that like all of my emotional problems are now my spouse's emotional problems. All of my unresolved issues and insecurities, I just get to open that up and this person gets to step in and fix those things. And like Chloe said that there's like, you need people around you that are going to help. Like marriage is not the fix for all of those things. Marriage is not like because you found the one you don't need anybody else. And that's just not true. I think it's a magnifier. A lot of times it's not, it's not a, it's not a magic bullet. It's Mm -hmm. actually a magnifier of some problems you already probably had, you know, and you've got to be prepared to. She, so Kathy Wingo used this example of, um, two people that have homes, they have individual homes and they're becoming one. So they're building this garden between these homes. And if, your house is not what it should be. If it's falling apart, if it's dirty, if it has structural issues, meaning if you have issues personally, you're going to bring those issues into what you're building together. So the best way to build a marriage is to have individually, spiritually, emotionally, uh, physically healthy individuals that are coming together to build Mm -hmm. something. That's the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. That person is not going to complete you. They're not going to fix you. They're not going to be everything that you need to be um, and just make everything right. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, when I've had some struggles too, I go to my inner circle and I go to my community and then I go to Danny after too and I'm like, hey, this is what I process with them because I'm an external processor. So who know? I need someone to talk to me to figure out what is going on in my head, to figure out what problems I have. And so a lot of times I use like my inner circle, my community too. And sometimes it's Danny, sometimes it's my friends, you know. Um, and then I report back to Danny, report back <laughs> to my friends, you know. And so I think you need all of them, friends, husband, whatever. And I, I think one thing that you hear sometimes, which I, I never really believe, I'll, I've talked to a couple married couples and they're like, yeah, we just never fight. We don't have any. And it's like, Good for you, I like <laughs> that. May, maybe they just are on like that level, if you will. Um, I, I would wonder if maybe they're not uncovering some things that because it's not even fighting. Right. But there's mm-hmm. going to be tension at times. And yeah, I, I, like there's going to be conflict. And in any good team, any good mm-hmm. relationship, you face adversity, you face conflict and you have to work through. It. And that's something that Em and I talk about all the time. Like in, in some of our worst moments, at the end of the night, we've always said, hey, we are on the same team, though. Mm-hmm. In raising our kids, we're mm-hmm. on the same team. In our marriage, we're on the same team. Like in all the things that life brings at us, we are on the same team together. And I think you have to have that team mentality. Otherwise, that I think that's why a lot of marriages do end in divorce, because it's not a team together unified in mission and purpose in life, but it's people looking to be just satisfied individually. And that's where I think the hiccups begin is a misunderstanding of what the purpose of marriage is in the first place. Yeah. I remember in one of Pastor Eddie's, our senior pastor's messages, he talked about how um, conceit or like ill will towards the other person was one of the greatest um, barriers or like things that lead to divorce. And I just remember that because it is so easy to think through like convince yourself the other person is is so much more selfish mm-hmm. than you are. Convince yourself they don't think about your family like you do. Convince yourself. And it, those are lies from the devil that are going to mm-hmm. start eroding at the foundation of your marriage. Mm-hmm. That you have to kind of take those thoughts captive and go, okay, what is this thought? Is it true? Is it something worth dwelling on? Is it something worth bringing up? Or is it something I need to say, no, it's not true, and let it let it fall to the wayside? Mm-hmm. Chloe, you, you've said something before, and I, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot here, but I just remember you saying this all the time, is that um, you kind of had these expectations for Jake when you got married about like what his spiritual walk was supposed to look mm-hmm. like. And it, could you just like... You, you said you realized, like, kind of explain that process to, to us, if you can, of, like, how you, you kind of, like, grew through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like entering into marriage, can there's so many things of, like, 
missed expectations, but like those expectations weren't realistic. And so like that is the biggest thing I feel like I have learned in marriage is like I have so many unrealistic expectations um, or things maybe like, yeah, like I didn't communicate with Jake that that was my expectation. Um, but something that I learned like early on when we would like wake up in the mornings and we're spending time with God before we go about our day, like mine would look one way um, and then Jake's looked another way. And I would always like I was so like put off at first. So I was like, why are you already done doing that? And you've moved on. Like for him, Jake, like, le- like he is very talented, like a um, musician. And so he will, like this morning, he, after he read his Bible and journaled, like he went in and like played piano and like yeah. worshiped. And I was like, and now obviously I love that so much. And it's like so sweet for me to hear in the other room. Yeah. But before I was like, why did you end journaling so fast and went to go <laughs> play guitar? But it's like for him, he's not just playing guitar. Like yeah. he's worshiping to God. Like that's him talking to God. And so I had that missed expectation. And I was like, gosh, that like kind of like what you said earlier is marriage actually is more of a magnifying glass so it put that back onto me of being like okay take a look at your heart and the pride that you think that your time with God is perfect and everyone should look that way (laughs) and so God used those mixed missed expectations to put it back on me to my like sin issue that I had Yeah, yeah what were I would ask you guys what were maybe some expectations you had going into marriage that were different or maybe uncommunicated uh that that kind of maybe came out Um, Yeah, I think some expectation for myself that I put on Danny, too. Um, We were listening to 30 Minutes um, with the Perrys, uh, and they were kind of talking about, like, our time with God. And I was like, oh, my time with God is, like, a little bit different than college, but I do feel like I'm growing. And I felt like Danny's was a little bit different, kind of like what Chloe's was saying. Um, So I was putting all this, like, missed expectation on Danny and, honestly, standards. And I didn't realize that, like, oh, our time with God, like, changes as we, like, grow, and um, one of my friends was asking me, like, oh, how did uh, Danny lead you spiritually while you were dating, and I was like, oh, well, we, like, Danny didn't really, we did it individually, and then we came together when we were talking about, you know, like, our future things, but we did that individually, and that's how it is in the mornings, we do it individually, and then we come together at the end, and we say, like, oh, what did you learn, or what's some prayer requests, and I was just putting this expectation of, like, oh, we do everything together, we do everything the same, Mm -hmm. Um, and it was not like that, and even, like, now, from when I first got married, my relationship with God looks so much different, and I do, Mm -hmm. like, my quiet times, like, a, a ton different, and I just I had an unrealistic expectation of that for sure. Yeah, I think for uh, Emma and I, one of the things like the expectation that I had is um, I am a little bit more type A. I'm a little bit more task oriented. And so for me, like a successful day looks like checking off all of the boxes on all of the things. And I felt like I was like, okay, as a spiritual leader, right? You know, I'm like, I'm going to help Emma with this. And I feel like what God did was instead he showed me, hey, I want you to chill out sometimes, you know what I mean? And my wife is so good at responding to situations. Like, I can be so fired up about it, and she's like, yeah, it's kind of like a bummer. And it's like, (laughs) no, did you just hear what I said? You know, and I, I wanted her to be like, equal parts passion in everything I was passionate about. And I think what God showed me is actually just that I needed to grow to become more like her. And so I think in this, uh, it took me years to figure that out, but in this kind of like, unmet expectation in my mind slowly I realized okay God you're teaching me something like you wanted me to grow uh in this way what would you say for you and Tyler Jared probably the thing that's like ever changing and ever growing for us is just communication Mm -hmm. and that was where probably I mean really for the first like two years we were like figuring it out and we dated for a long time before we were married so I was like this is gonna be good we're just Mm -hmm. gonna like add some stuff to our relationship and we'll be good. Like this will be (laughs) awesome. And really it was like, I needed to learn how to communicate in a, in a much more deep and intimate way where I can be a person who has a hundred surface level relationships and I'm good. Mm. And I can include Tyler in that. And Tyler like needs and, and is justified in needing like a deeper emotional connection. And that took a long time for us to learn how Tyler communicated because of the way that she was raised and how I communicated mm-hmm. because of the way that, that I was raised and how we need to communicate in different seasons when you have kids and when you're busy and when you're not busy mm-hmm. and how you can communicate in all those different ways. For us, it's an ever-changing, ever-growing thing, but um, you know, it's been eight years and it's like, it's still growing and it's still been really good. Um, and it's just, I feel like every month is like, man, this was better than it's ever been because of this. Um, 
you guys both mentioned Logan and, and Chloe both kind of mentioned how marriage is like a magnifying glass. Mm. Uh, and I've heard, I think Craig Rochelle, I can't remember if it was him or not said marriage and money make you more of what you already are. Um, probably a good guess that it was, it's, him. he says a lot of things <laughs> and says them well. So, um, but what are maybe some things that you guys have grown in or, uh, you know, I think about marriage as like one of its roles is in your sanctification and your, your being made more like Christ. So, um, what are some things that you've maybe grown in, in marriage? Yeah, I think a year into Danny and I's marriage, I realized, crap, I am leading and I am taking control and I am um, not letting him lead. Uh, I feel like I am the Logan and Danny is the Emma. Um, And so Danny is just so like gentle and, you know, I am just like fiery and just aggressive, honestly. And so um, I was like, why is Danny not leading me in this way? Why, why? And I would ask him, I'm like, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And he's like, well, you're not letting me like Mm -hmm. you are taking charge. And so therefore you're assuming the leadership role Mm -hmm. and you're not allowing me to do that. And that's something that I was like, wow, yeah, I have like a control issue. And so I want to lead and therefore I'm not letting Danny lead our family. I'm leading our family, Mm -hmm. which was honestly an attack from the enemy too, because then he felt less than he didn't feel respected. I didn't feel loved. And it was just, you know, a circle until I like release control. And I'm like, you know what? I, Danny doesn't do it my way, but like, I need to trust him that he's going to lead us well. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that I struggled with. I think uh, probably the most sanctifying thing that I've seen in my life from marriage is probably, like I mentioned earlier, pridefulness, but also just peace, like in patience. Like Mm -hmm. my Emma is very patient. She is very kind. She is very intentional in her conversations and things. And I'm very much daring, like you're talking about, Mm -hmm. I'm like, on to the next thing. The mission's too important. (laughs) Everything else doesn't (laughs) matter. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, that, that like has humbled me. And so I've seen that in, in awesome ways, like you were saying, Jared, this month's the best month. I feel like that's the way I would describe our marriage where it's like, oh, this is better than it's ever been before. We're, we're in the middle of 21 days of prayer and fasting as a church right now. Um, and it's like, man, this is the best our marriage has ever been as we do that. And it's just cool to see that like when you are following Christ together, you get to see that that happens, is that it is continually getting better. It doesn't mean that there's not bad seasons, but there's always a march towards growing in Christ-likeness in your marriage. And I've seen the things that I do well, I, the strengths that I have, I see that in Emma now in certain ways, and I see her strengths in me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny that you guys both said, like, mentioned pride and control, because I was going to say both of those for me that God has um, revealed. And I think, um, like, a big thing for me is, like, receiving feedback and maybe, like, Christ-like criticism from Jake of like the way that like he'll call out the way that I reacted to something he said that definitely like wasn't honoring to God and isn't helping grow my walk with him and so but for me I'm like so prideful and don't want to hear that I'm doing something wrong or you know something like that or I want the control of um I wanted the control of that conversation or something. So I feel like God has really just revealed those things to me and I'm honestly so thankful that he's given me Jake in allowed me to enter into marriage to like reveal these things to me like it really is a gift from the lord i love being told when i'm wrong so that's <laughs> part is easy for not just kidding. really yeah, i'm I joking, like, oh no, I'm joking. Yeah. i i really i circling back to like jake uh in part of his quiet time like playing piano and stuff mm-hmm. i never even crossed my mind until like right now that people do that so <laughs> yeah. uh, people are different i love so that sweet. that's so cool yeah one of the things that uh, it's funny that you talked about you're a little bit more type A, Darian. Logan's a little bit more type A. I grew up with like my role models and like the, the people that I felt like were men that I like, I wanted to, to emulate were all type A, take life by the horns. And I'm type B. I'm like, I'm not that way. So early in marriage, Tyler is that way. So we could fall into those like stereotypical, like it's easier for me to just let Tyler lead or it's easier for her to just go ahead and do it. And it's easier for me to just ask her, hey, what's up? What are we doing? And that's not necessarily mm-hmm. wrong, but it's also, it's who God made us to be, but it's also, I'm called to lead in our family. But it, it was early in marriage. It was like one of those where I was like, I thought I was just the worst. I thought mm-hmm. I was incapable of, of leading our family. I thought I wasn't, I wasn't who I should have been. And I thought Tyler's, you know, a little bit too aggressive. So I was like, could be get really down on myself and us. And it was like that, none of that was true. Mm-hmm. All of that was just a lie just kind of diminish myself, diminish mm-hmm. our marriage. And it, in reality, it's like God created us to, to be together. And I'm convinced that like 
this is a totally different topic, but there's not like a one for each person. There's just two Christians that met, started believing Christ and, and married each other. And it works because they both are putting Christ first. And it's like, we're in this marriage, so God is going to make it work. And if I'm starting to believe lies, that means I'm not going to submit to God in who he's made me to be, who he's made Tyler to be. And for me, it's a submission to get up, do, do a little bit more, be active, be thoughtful, be um, proactive and not just like wait for Tyler to make the decision. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the things that's probably helped me um, the most is just understanding that God didn't create me wrong and didn't create Tyler um, wrong. Um, any other uh, thoughts, ideas, uh, hot takes on marriage, things that have helped you, things that have, that have hurt? We going hot take round? We're going hot. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. Uh -oh. um, I don't think mine's a hot take. But um, I read this book called Fervent a while ago, and I've picked it up here and there. It's I mean, I definitely recommend reading the whole thing through. But you can also pick it up and read a chapter, and then you know, put it away for a year, like you know, stuff like that. But one of the chapters is praying around your marriage, and um, I just think about like marriage of course the enemy wants to destroy it because like marriage is the thing that God created to glorify and honor him like marriage doesn't just function for itself like it functions for what you can see through and that hopefully is Christ and like what his love for us in the church looks like and so it's like of course the enemy wants to destroy it and come against your marriage and make you guys argue with each other and all of these kind of things and so I just think that um if you're um, entering into a season of marriage, if you are married, if you desire that, like pray for it now, like surround that in prayer now because the enemy hates it and doesn't want it to flourish and to thrive. And so pray over your marriage um, or your future marriage because um, God really does delight in that. Yeah, my final words would be don't quit. It'll, it'll be worth it. It'll be good. It won't always be easy, but it'll be worth it. Yeah, my final words are surround yourself in community um, because I think it is important and um, I hope that whenever my kids are growing up, maybe in High Street, maybe in another church, who knows, um, but I hope that I have um, families around me that's like the bones and the counts and the kickers, how their kids are all like a community because the adults are all a community. So um, I would just say fight for community. Yeah, I would say that if you're in a spot where you, you're like, I don't have a good example in front of me, go find one. Go ask the question, hey, can I just come over for dinner sometime and watch? Even if you had a good example of marriage from your parents, sometimes you need to see it outside of your family yeah. to, for it to really click. And then you go, oh, okay, the things that my parents did make some sense now. Um, because sometimes when it's your parents, you don't see it. Um, but it, it never hurts to have a good example in front of you um, and go become the person that the person you want to date wants to date you. So, uh, man, we hope that this has been encouraging for you. We hope that this has been, been helpful. Um, if this has been helpful, we'd love for you to share, to like, to uh, rate, subscribe uh, the podcast, and we will see you next time.